the Million Dollar Mortgage Experience Podcast. All right, welcome to the show. I'm here with Brandon Boyd. He is a social media director, a marketing expert, a loan originator at Secure Choice Lending. They're based in Riverside. And uh, Brandon's been in the business about seven years and his keen eye for marketing creatively and tactics to help his company close more loans. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me, bud. Yes. So good to have you back. I think, is this the first time you've done a full podcast? I know we've done the Mortgage Minutes. Yeah, we did the Mortgage Minute back in the, like, I think I was like the first one probably where we went through the the million dollar Mortgage Minute or whatever it was. Um, and we talked about just getting leads, creative, being creative and getting leads and, um, you know, assembling a database. And um, but, yeah, it's been a while. This is the first time I've been at the new office and man, you're killing it. I love it. It's fun. Love this, this spot. You guys are growing I'm so fast. glad to have you back from Riverside. I know. Thank you. You had to run through, uh, a, I think, a, a torrential downpour, like a I don't even know what to the call it. The Category 5 hurricane <laughs> that I don't think California has ever seen. That's how excited we were to get here. You had here. to pull over two or three times? Off the, off yeah, the no, like three or four times. It was Jeez. We couldn't even see like two car lengths in front of us. <laughs> Joey let a Tesla get in front of us, so we're like, we trust the Tesla. Yeah, the Tesla you know? knows. <laughs> yeah. see. He's on autopilot. Right. Elon's guiding the way. <laughs> Elon's guiding the way. <laughs> we can trust Dude, that. Dude, if, if we can just keep Elon out of the mortgage business, then I think we're going to be uh, fine. We don't want any He'll take more... Over. AI or automation or anything. <sighs> yeah. Lead Luckily, we do people. tougher loans, and AI hasn't figured that out yet, hopefully. Um, well, this give us a quick kind of uh, background on you and how you got in the mortgage biz. Yeah. No, um, I've been, I think, a little bit more than seven years now, but um, I used to work, well, I moved out to San Diego. I started working at Calvin Klein. I was a manager there, and I was a manager of suiting. And it's funny, I, you know, I sold so many suits. There was literally like no stock at one point. They didn't even like, couldn't even reorder. And everyone I talked to that had a Rolex, I would just be like, what do you do? What do you do for a living? You know, and then. Because you didn't want to be a suit salesman. Forever. No, of course. I wasn't going to be. You know, my uncle's actually pretty successful in real estate. And I always knew I was going to most likely be in real estate in some form or fashion, but wasn't sure what that really looked like yep. at all. Um, so I would just talk to, you know, anyone I could. And. You know, I kept hearing people, mortgage, mortgage. I was like, okay. You know, and then multiple people said, obviously, you know, because at the time, what was that? 2012, 13? 12, 13, yeah. Yeah, so it wasn't the best time, you know, mm-hmm, but people mm-hmm. were like, well, if you know what you're doing, it's still a great industry. Right. And, you know, in walks you with, <laughs> you wanted a full suit, everything. You're going to speak at some conference in Texas, I want to say. Mm-hmm. Kind of about the thing you called a boomerang five buyers. Yep, five-star conference, yep. Yeah, where they were talking about, you know, after foreclosure, people that went through foreclosures buying again. And uh, I want to say I sold you everything down to the socks. <laughs> so you kind of suggested maybe you sell something a little bit more expensive. And right. uh, you said you were opening a mortgage company in the next few months and, you know, kind of keep in touch. And we did. Yep. And when, <laughs> you know, when you hit me up, basically we went down to the new office. You said... There was no interview. It was pick a desk. Yeah. You know, I guess I already did the interview when I sold the suit. You did, yeah. So, uh, you know, and then after a couple of weeks, it was uh, picking up very fast, said hire a team, and off we went. So You, we started, you started picking them from In-N-Out Burger. <laughs> literally, yeah. We got one gentleman from In-N-Out Burger. You just, you know, it's funny when you see, especially in these days, you know, where customer service is like fallen from... From grace, I guess you could say. Let's just, nobody well, really has. People don't care it. as much like they used to. Before you had to yeah. care, you had your reputation. Now it's just like, so it's easier happened, to spot, yeah. you know. Yep. So I'm not saying how talented I was, but yeah, we picked from In and Out. I picked some managers from Calvin Klein. Um, Akash, you remember Akash? Mm-hmm. He's still mm-hmm. in mortgages, yeah. doing it, working for uh, Wells Fargo, I believe. That's right. Um, so yeah, we got a bunch of really good people, man, and those it was fun times, you know. Yeah. Calling all the after foreclosure, uh, leads and you walk away had. leads. Yep. Yeah, you went. That was, that was smile and dial. That's what it was. You had to do. It. You had to hustle, right? You really did. Especially and I think back we're then. back in that same time where it's like you got to hustle if you're going to be successful yeah. in mortgages today. It's not a rate quote, you know, world that we we're we're not in a lower your rate world. We're no. in a sell the rate, sell or not sell the rate, sell the payment, sell the the benefit. Sell the, you know, sell you as a, as a, as a, you know, who to work with versus yeah. just, oh, I got the best lowest rate, you know, because the rates suck right now. No, I think it really comes down to, and I mean, marketing is key. Individually branding is key. 
you know, I think society or just customers are pulling away from that big bank concept. Yeah. They're tired of like the, you know, the banks don't care. They don't care about you as an individual. They want to work with somebody that's personal that they know that, you know, they trust and kind of branding and creating that image of yourself on social media and online, I think is one of the best ways to get in front of them. Yeah. So, so tell us more about that. How do you, how do you brand yourself in mark in social media marketing? I think the, I mean, the, probably a million ways, but like, what's some go-to ways? I think the, the most important thing is just consistency. Yeah. You know, so many people are like, they watch a couple of YouTube videos, or whatever they see their favorite influencer and they just want to go out there. And you know, a lot of people, they, they're so scared of not being perfect that they never post anything. Yeah. You know, well, it's, it's intimidating, I guess, for some people because it's like, it's new. Yeah. You haven't done it yet. Right. You're like, especially our industry is a little older. Yeah. You know, we do have for the most part. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's heavily weighted in the, uh, in the fifties. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, and so, yeah, people like that, I'm, I'm almost 50 and, and, you know, I've had to like stay up on, you know, things. And we just had another person in, in the marketing industry talk to me about, you know, like stories versus reels versus, yeah. And so there's there's a lot to learn, and and if you're if you're focused on your mortgage business, it's hard to know. yeah. So that's why we're some someone like you, who's more savvy and knows how to do this stuff, comes into to, to really benefit a mortgage company. You know, and it's key that the mortgage company that you're working for understands that, right? You know what I mean? Like, there's so many mortgage companies I worked for before where I'm asking for a marketing piece or something, and it's two weeks out, and it's like, okay, well, the news about that is it's relevant. Over. <laughs> it's over. It's gone. Yeah. What's the point of that? You know yeah. what I mean? So. Yeah. Working with, um, you know, a mortgage company that understands how it's important to stay relevant. It's important to kind of push content out consistently. Right. And the importance of the self branding, you know, because there's so many companies that want to, they want to be the face of everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like represent us, represent us. You know, one thing that Secure does really well is like we're really about like the individual loan officer and a lot of them too. It's a very team oriented. Yep. There's a lot of different teams. And it's about boosting that team and them. It's like, mm -hmm. cool, like, yeah, power by secure choice for sure. But it's about you and how can we grow you and, you know, your business. Yeah. So what, uh, so consistency. Consistency is key. And you can, you know, obviously there is a lot of different things between. Is that every day? Is that twice a day? Is that no, once a week? I mean, twice a week? Three times? What, what's... I think posting your story, I really do think you should post every day to your story. Your story. Because I think Instagram recognizes that and really tries to push you in front if you're consistently posting to your story. Yeah. So me, myself, and you know, that, that wouldn't be stuff that's like, you're too concerned about making it sure it looks pretty. No, it's just, that's it's just, just more even real. sharing other content. It's more real, right? It's like, like, like what I mean by real is like more authentic, like, Hey, I'm, I'm, you know, I just, I just talked to a borrower and this is what I did. This is what yeah. I said. Sharing, just kind of sharing what your thoughts are on stuff or just yeah. where you are. Where are you going to lunch? Even just, personal stuff, right? Like, where are you going to lunch? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Just being again, consistent, showing your everyday life that you're a real person yeah. i think that's the again going from a big bank it's like this big entity that people are scared of you know yeah. what i mean and you don't know there's no there's familiarity no exactly yeah. there's no connection that's the right. perfect way so it's like how do you establish a connection with your client before you ever talk to them yeah and that is the i mean social media you I can't think of a better way you know you're posting your family your your kids what you're up to the week going to the christmas tree farm yeah. these people identify with you long before they ever reach out to you you know, so. But is the goal to get a DM? Is that kind of the goal or to get them to call you? Like that's, at, at some point you're doing all this work, showing you're real, showing you're human, showing you're mm -hmm. connectable. And then the goal is to get them to DM you about, mm -hmm. hey, I saw that you posted about a veteran loan. I'm a, I'm a veteran, you know, or whatever it might be, right? Or you, you're posting about self-employed, you know, second mortgages. I, I, I can't get qualified for a HELOC. Like, is that, that's the goal, right? Like you're, you're getting... hundred percent. You, that is the goal. Yeah. Another big thing though, is you got to think while you're talking to all these other clients that are out in the world, they're going to look you up. Yeah. And the very first thing they're going to do, it's not so much even Google anymore. They're going to look you up on Instagram. They're going to sure. look you up on Facebook. Especially, yeah. If you're open, if you're not like private. Right. Yeah. So I think so don't I, be, if you're trying to push yourself, don't be private. Right. No, no, not if you're a, a business these days. I mean, I see that a decent amount, but, um, you know, I, I don't recommend right. being private, you know. Um, but the biggest thing is just giving the world and that potential client access to who you are, because, mm -hmm. I mean, they could be picking between a bunch of different people, but they see that you're a tennis player. Right. They see that, you know, you have horses or, you know. What I mean, something they can connect with you over, right? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, that's one of the first things I think I learned 
from you back in the day, smiling and dialing, just finding a connection as immediately as possible. Right. And this is the best way to leave, you know, kind of an open, um, kind of, I guess you could say template for who you are for the world to see. Yeah. So, so how are you kind of gauging and making sure that you are getting DMS like, or how, how you, cause I know, cause I know that's something like, if that's the goal, mm -hmm. Like, how do you, how do you monetize or how do you like quantify like that, that you're getting DMs and obviously you see the DMs, but, yeah. like, but are you like, do you go, oh man, this, this certain post created these four to eight, three or four DMs this week. So I need to do more of that. Like what? Yeah. What? So Instagram, um, you know, especially with business and creator accounts, I recommend going, uh, using a creator account rather than a business account because you have all the same access to analytics, mm -hmm. but you also have access to music where if you do a business account, they won't let you use like Kanye West or whoever <laughs> sure. on your reels and things. Right, right. Um, well, creator account, it will. So you can, Instagram does a great job of giving you the analytics to see kind so of what's working. So what do you do if you have the wrong account? Can you shut it down? Oh, no, no, you don't need to shut it down. It's, it's as simple as settings, switching your t uh, profile type. Oh, to, uh, uh, it, to a creator account. Yeah, it takes literally 30 seconds. All right, you know, I've done know. that with a lot of my... Uh, Clients and I'm gonna have you people. look at my my Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> no, we'll we'll get that fixed up. Cool. So you're saying like you're you're a big believer in social media for mortgage brokers. I think you, and these days you have to you have to right. It's not even a and you question. have to be consistent, especially as a realtor. As a realtor, there's no choice. Right. You know, as a loan officer, you know, I th some people um, still have a choice, but it's it's fading fast. You yeah, know? you need you need to have that. So. Do you do you also connect not only with borrowers on social media but also like referral partners? Yeah, you want to you want to associate with everybody that's kind of, you know. So do you um, go out and like like a page of like a divorce lawyer or like you like yeah. that? like what's yeah, what's the follow, strategy? Follow them. You know, I, I don't like to talk business especially like immediately, right? Especially sure. you know, as I was originator, I've shifted more into the marketing side, but as an originator, as I would try and connect with realtors, you're not immediately reaching out to them and be like, Hey, I have, I do loans. Like cool. Right. Like they know 50 people that do loans. Right. Of course they do. Right. You know, so you're just commenting on their story, catch oh, their, catch their eye, get catch their, their attention. Eye. Just yeah. Have a quick conversation with them. If they're at a sushi place, you like, Oh, love, love sushi. Love that place. Oh, beautiful kids. Have oh, you whatever. tried this? The hand roll, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, connect with them on something a little bit more personal. And I, man, for me, like, <laughs> I'm a little bit more slow roll. I feel like people would want to get into it a little bit sooner, but man, 10, 20 times talking to them, then finally I'll be like, Hey, by the way, you know, if we get into a, yeah. a little bit longer conversation, you know, this is what I do. If you ever do need help with this, you know, this is what I can offer you. Yeah. So it's, it's more of planting seeds, watering it, like seeing it grow and you're and building, building a relationship, building rapport, building relationship. Yeah. You know, yeah. You're building a relationship. I wouldn't look at it. So, cause I mean, everyone gets on, Instagram, LinkedIn, and immediately LinkedIn they're getting is the worst. <laughs> I wish to <laughs> They've God trimmed could... it a little bit, but yeah, it's still pretty they, bad. They, no, but seriously, I, I don't. I barely even go on it. But like, yeah. if I go check my emails or my mess, whatever messages, there literally are people that send a message to me. I'm, I, I wish I, I should just read you one. It's it, please. It's, it's well, you, I think we all have seen them, right? Like, we all get these same messages, yeah. and and you you're reading and you're going. I can't even read this. It's giving me a headache. Well, half the time it's like two paragraphs they long. They are longer. It's like you're That's going like homework. this. This is yeah. Nobody wants to see or read that. No, no one's going. If someone to. said "hi douchebag," that would be better than you know. At oh, least it get my attention. Get my attention. You know. <laughs> but like, and they'd be like, "Why are you calling me that?" Right? And then you'd at least respond to it versus mm -hmm. like, you know, this is what we offer, and we got and we also have the ten percent off if you can before November first. Dude, this person needs to take some sales training classes. No, like, 100%. I remember actually one of the <laughs> sitting in my cubicle and I typed out this like two, three paragraph. And I was like, this sounds so good, you know? <laughs> and then you came up. I was like, John, John, read this. You're going to love it. You're going to love this. <laughs> and I think you looked at it for like five seconds, like, bro, that's homework. And, you know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, wait, what? And you're like, you here. And you like went, you deleted a bunch of stuff. You're like, short, sweet, to the point. You know, ask a question. Ask question and engage them. Yeah. No one's going to sit there and read three paragraphs about what you want to tell them. It's something they most likely don't give a shit about. Exactly. You know? Brokers, if you're listening right now, please take this advice. And if you're writing long emails, stop. Stop. stop.
And then maybe go back and read it yourself and go, would I respond to this? Or would yeah. I, Quick, how would engaging. I read it out loud, take the time to read it out loud and say to yourself, like, would I even look at this or would I hit delete yeah. immediately? And I guess, you know, if you're not getting a lot of responses from your emails, it's probably because people are hitting delete immediately. Yeah. Don't be so, long winded. Yeah. What other advice are you going to give us? <laughs> um, that's good advice because that's, that's half of it. They're not reading your email and they're deleting it. Mm -hmm. you're losing. No, 100%. And I mean, another thing, especially if, if this is kind of a loan officer tip. Yeah, brokers, you know, yeah, mortgage brokers. But uh, you, pretty much every realtor puts their their email on their Instagram. And phone number. And phone number, everything. And everything they love, all their so activities. and They're giving you everything you need right there to reach out to them. You know, create a database. What's get the a, pitch, though, when you reach out? What's your pitch? Everyone's different. You know no, what, what, what would my, what would be my pitch? Yeah, what's your approach? Well, I come from the non-QM side, so I just be like, I would just suggest that hey, you know, I I see that you have a traditional lend, you know, I'm sure you have a traditional lender right. that you go to for all your stuff. But if you ever have anybody that couldn't get that potentially couldn't get qualified, you sure. know, I offer programs with, you know, that for self-employed clients or whatever yeah, that they yeah. couldn't potentially get a conventional loan. And if you, you know, know what, if you offer, if you're a broker and you offer that as like a side thing, but you yeah. offer a paper and you offer, I mean, everyone offers the Fanny Freddy Gubby, right? So if you are doing that and you're doing non-QM, you know, it, it might be a good idea, right? To like start with that. take an approach like, Hey, we all, we, we not, we also, mm -hmm. but like, Hey, we actually have really great products for your self-employed borrowers or your tougher borrowers that maybe can't get approved from a bank. Would love to take some, sh take a shot at, at helping, you know, your clients. But I think, I do think that that's a good approach. Mm -hmm. I think also you're you're still you're still in a uh, a competitive you're you're kind of fighting uphill because you're in a competitive business where all the LOs are asking for business, right? Mm -hmm. So like, um, what other approaches do you have that are that are like going to help maybe set you aside, set you apart, give you an advantage from your average LO uh, that might you know be just kind of coming coming at a realtor or like is there a, is there other besides realtors people you go after? Um, I mean, financial planners, a lot of people, I mean, I think one angle that never gets old is just self-employed clients, you know, especially Going straight to them in 2023. Right. So many more people are qualified with, you know, they're 1099. Sure. They're able to qualify maybe with bank statements. Um, so kind of attacking that angle, you know, the P and L only type product. So can you find those on Instagram or on social? Like if they're, if they're self-employed? If they're self, not necessarily if they're self-employed. I mean, it just depends what they're they're putting in their profile or if sure. they're tagging certain but it's hashtags. It's hard to probably mass or, like mass search. No, I wouldn't say that's the thing. Is Instagram is not as good for like mass targeting. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, if you put in realtor, you're gonna get a hundred realtors. I mean, you probably you know, hashtag it right. You hashtag self-employed. You check the or... hashtag, yeah. And if someone's putting that, but then again, you know, I would say entrepreneur would be a yeah. better hashtag to check because a lot of times, you know, these they're people they're working late or whatever oh working late hashtag entrepreneur you right, know, right, and right that's going to be an easier way and then to you can go them. hit them up with maybe a pre kind of a pre-written thing but you could add a couple yeah i would just follow them you follow know them and follow them like a couple pictures of theirs and then just track maybe, it maybe make a comment or two on some of their posts yeah. commenting is huge because people like like that right because like you know i mean not Unless you're famous, you're not getting a ton of comments. Even if you are famous, you know what I mean? Like what's yeah. interesting, if you look at the ratios on a lot of these bigger accounts, even, you know, if you're in the industry and you recognize some of these Josh Altmans and Tracy Tudor and all these people, you know, you're 30,000 followers, but they have more than 30,000. I mean, Altman's almost up to a million, you know, so, but so if you look at it, followers, but how many comments that 200,000 likes and like 15 comments, right? And so you know, they're reading their comments. Like there's only 15, 100% they're reading their comments. You know, and then even taking email addresses from there. I mean, I've seen, you know, I put a lot of, you know, bigger people in my database and I see, you know, through MailChimp who reads right. them and, you know, yeah, a lot of those people, they read their emails, man. You know, especially so you if they're see, not paragraphs, right? <laughs> no, exactly. Short, sweet, especially, I mean, MailChimp and, you know, email marketing is a completely different strategy. I don't even write anything. You know, I use a lot of times I'll take clean content that I've created for Instagram and put that into a MailChimp. And so advertising, whatever it is, you know, qualify short-term bridge loans up to 10 million, something unique. Super qualify like a hook. With, a hook yeah, to grab them, yeah, qualify with no tax returns up to 10 million. You know, right. something that's um, gonna stand out that not a lot of people can offer. And 
you know, a really clean graphic, you know, so while I do say be consistent, don't worry too much about perfection. I think the content that you are putting out is still very important. Right. You know, you still want to have a very clean aesthetic to the things you're doing. Right. You know, because again, that's another way you stand out. There's so much kind of weak content in our space. That's, you know, yeah. can yeah. be <laughs> cringeworthy to see There's, sometimes. There is a lot of weak content. Yeah. Just spend some time on LinkedIn and even on Instagram. Like, yeah. Wow. It's and every, and you know, every, every platform has kind of a different strategy, you know, and a unique approach that you want to take to it. But I think for the most part, you know, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn are the three that you 100% need yeah. an account on. What's the angle on LinkedIn? I know probably like we just said, like most people yeah. are posting way too much. used to be better. Yeah. used to be way better. But how do you, I mean, what, uh, there's probably different strategies for each one, right? Like Instagram, like for me, I go there to see what my friends are doing mm -hmm. most of the time. LinkedIn, I go see what my colleagues are doing. And then Facebook, I don't even have that, but like, <laughs> you know, like there's, there, I'm sure that's more your family or whatever. Yeah, like other Facebook's people... become so secondary just because Instagram and Facebook are the same owner. Meta owns them both. Yeah. So as you post things on Instagram, there's a one button you touch and it automatically goes to Facebook. Right. So personally, you know, as soon as I post something to Facebook, awesome. And then, yeah, a lot of people from you know, high school and friends of the family that are right, older right. still have their Facebook. Which they stuff. can refer you, bitch. There's benefit. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying don't have, I'm saying have it. Yeah, you I'm should, just saying that both. it's not something that people are going to be as active on as they once were, especially the younger generation. Um, I think that being active on Instagram is probably the most important thing you can do. And then LinkedIn is important for the business to business relationships. Yeah. And there's ways to go about Referral it. Referral partners know? and stuff. Yeah, like yeah. you don't want to send, of course, the same type of concept as an email. You're not sending a three paragraph, but just a, Hey, Hey, it's great to connect. This is what I do. If you ever need anything, you know, cause we had, um, different press for wall street journal. Um, I had some quotes LA in the times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. dude, I had some quotes in the LA times that, you know, I would basically reach out and just be like, Hey, I'm Brandon Boyd. Here's a recent quote I had, you know, here's a recent article I was in the feature in the LA times. This is what I do. If you ever need anything short, sweet link, out yep, yep. you know and you would get a, a lot of good responses you know especially if you're being a little different from you know the 20 percent off and if you buy right. our well, sales is like it like completely oh my god triggers a little thing in our head that says delete yeah like i have to delete you don't want to be sold every morning i have to delete and i go through and still unsubscribe on a bunch of stuff but like your email like, yeah like i'll have to delete i don't know how many emails every day in that that sucks. Yeah. It's just, I kind of like accept it as like part of my life, right? Like every day I have to delete emails. I'm sure everyone else has to do that too, right? I mean, do you, do you have to deal with that? Oh yeah. You or don't do you... even want to see my Gmails probably get like <laughs> 300 unread emails. <laughs> I'm so bad. Especially since I switched to Gmail, no knock on Google. They don't right. like censor us. But uh, yeah, I can't stand the way they stack emails and stuff. I can't. Yeah. I'm like the worst <laughs> with the email. I was so like, text tons me. Tons of, Please text yeah. me. <laughs> On your iPhone, is it, is it say like how many emails you have? Like, I don't there? even. Yeah, yeah it's like, in the hundreds, bud. So I have like a, a, a Mac account that I've had forever. Oh, and there my, you go. And my Mac account, I just turned off the, the notifications because it's like yeah. so much spam. So I, I, you know, I have my fun loans and a couple other ones, but um, I hate those little, the little number. If it says like 300, it just stresses me out. Like 300 emails still to go through. There you go. What does your say? 289. Yeah. <laughs> I would be stressed. Too, <laughs> I got to go through those right now. Oh, it takes forever. And then I'm not but, really like, good. We're at talking like... about deleting, like deleting emails. Like that's the, that's what we're up against is, is most people who are busy, which is most of us, whether you're busy or not, everyone's busy in some yeah. sense, right? Whether 100%. it's with business or life or whatever, you're deleting emails and there's gotta be, there's a moment when our brain says, Oh, I should read this. That's, that's what we want that. What's How do you that catch them? What's that magic you know, that, that makes them not hit delete on your email? How do you be different? How are you not saying the same thing as everyone else is saying? And I think, yeah. again, it's hard because I don't want to get up here and like generalize everything because there's nothing to generalize. Like, how do you be different? How do you stand? How do you be you? Yeah. That's that, the most that's important really what thing. It is. Everyone is trying to mimic the next person. Right. How do you be authentically honestly you on social media via email you, right? in in business yeah. yeah how do you be the best, the best version you. of you yeah <laughs> there you go exactly yeah because i mean sometimes you have to think hard and you get 
we get lazy. We're like, oh, I'm just going to post this. Yeah. Right. And it's like, it's, it's not thought through mm-hmm. where like you could really think through something, take a few minutes, be intentional. I hate that word, but be intentional yeah. about, I mean, it's true about what you're going to do. And then, yeah, send it, send it out. Yeah. No, especially on, on Instagram. Um, it's, if you just want to be consistent, again, I think posting those stories is key. Um, I'm not a big, you know, I've kind of fallen off on trying to be like an influencer myself. I've more focused on the company and what sure. we're doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but dude, it's really hard to be an influencer. Just so you know. Yo, <laughs> no thanks. You know what I mean? Like P- people are are there. That's their job though. Like, yeah. They're 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 renting or like they're doing an hour with a private jet so they can get private jet picture. Like right. It's so. Or fake. it's like a toilet seat. Have you seen those ones? It's like a toilet seat oh, and they're looking out the like window. But it looks like a jet window. Oh, another flight. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like a plane window. So yeah, funny. I mean, yeah, and I think it's like you don't want you want to be an influencer in your niche in your yeah. business, but you don't want to be a cheesy like be gonna, known in your space. But but there's a reason why you're doing it. It's to get business. It's to mm. get DMs. It's to get inquiries about what you're doing so that and you know so that, that you have business. Like we're yeah. not just there to get famous or just to like no and i mean what are the chances to look cool and i mean especially mortgages like you're not going to really blow up into some right. major influencer like you're the top me. lo i mean there's only a few top los yeah like you're you can be in the mix and you know you can you can you can definitely gain you know a lot more business by doing these things right? no a hundred percent you can um especially if you learn how to use their ad systems and how they work and how to target um, but you, would you recommend someone learning that or hiring someone to do that? I mean, work for a company that helps you do it, you know? Yeah. Cause I mean, that's the biggest but thing. What if is, you're a broker, you got three, you're a broker shop, you got three or four or five LOs. Hire like, somebody. Bro. Hire someone. Like, a, hire like somebody. an agency or something. Yeah. Small agency. Somebody that's very tailored and specialized. Um, that knows some mortgage lingo and. Yeah. Cause that's another thing, you know, that's interesting is our space is very unique and very, um, you have to have a lot of information, you know, so it's hard to hire just a generalized marketing person to come in and be right. like, sure, pitch mortgages. Okay, well, what you we want to sell for specific programs. These people don't know the programs. They don't no. know the guidelines. They don't know anything. Right. You know, so. So maybe you get a coach, like a social media coach. That, yeah. So no, that I you're still doing great... it, but they're prompting you and teaching you and. I'm just saying. Like, yeah. I, or somebody, know. you know, in your circle that's good on social media that you can easily direct and you know, have close contact with because uh, there's not many of me. (laughs) Unfortunately, (laughs) there's, you know. Maybe you can find one at In-N-Out or something. Maybe. Like a young person. (laughs) Maybe. How much you make in In In-N-Out? Okay, I'll hire you for the same amount, but you get to do social media. Here's the thing. There's a lot of people coming out of college that are young and talented on social media that it's not, they're not really generating money from it, but they're really good at Instagram. They're good at getting engagement. So just, you know, hire somebody like that. It's young, out of college, cheap. And kind of have them help you grow. What about TikTok? I don't like TikTok. I don't do any TikTok. I don't want to give all Chinese my information. <laughs> Personally, you I don't want to I mean, sit there and like communist I'm, China. Yeah, yeah. I, I, <sighs> and I don't know enough to know if that's true or what. But like, I just know that there are a lot of people going viral on, and probably mostly for dancing and doing silly, you know, stuff like that. But yeah, but I mean, I'm sure there's more younger generation on TikTok, Snapchat, other things. But you're you're saying. I mean, if you want to hone in on one, it's it's Instagram because then you can push it to Facebook. So you get yeah. two, like double bang for your buck, basically. And use, um, you know, and again, like you said, TikTok, that's a younger generation. How many 14-year-olds are buying houses? And then there's a lot of realtors getting on there. You know, the one thing is it's good at create. TikTok is really good for creating content. So what I do see working is creating some content on TikTok and then moving that over to Instagram. To reels. Yeah, but right. also you don't want to be the same realtor that's like, you, we've all seen another point to like the different things as it's popping up. Oh, like, that little trend or whatever. Yeah, yeah, man. Like, no, you didn't sell any houses <laughs> doing that. You're not going to, you know? So again, just be authentic and that, show, yeah. us what, show us what's really going on in your life. Be I authentic, think, be consistent, mm-hmm. learn a thing or two about what you're doing as far as like the back end, so you know yeah. it reaches the most, right? Mm-hmm. Some hashtags. Yeah, hashtags are key. I wouldn't, you know, that's another thing a lot I mean, of do, people do. Do people do that? Do people go on like... I know I don't really do that where I go, what's it called? It's not your feed, but it's your explore page. Explore page. Mm-hmm. Do, do people do that? Do people go on explore? That's, I mean, personally, I'm mostly on the are explore you, page. You are, I okay. like to see, cause it's really, you know, it's showing you a lot of people that you're 
communicating with and around and it's showing you the content that they're seeing and you know the people that how you're following that, what they're how's that explore page is that how's that formulated is it based on your choices or your uh are some your profile of it, so that it yeah. kind of feeds you what you what you they think you want yeah it's just like anything okay. if you're very yeah. right wing it's going to show you a bunch of right wing stuff if you're, you're very social conscious yeah yeah exactly justice and for sure yeah. you know if you like swimsuit models you're going to see a lot of swimsuit models you know but sure. it's also both yeah. You know, it, it feeds off of a few different things. Um, it's also looking at what the people that you're communicating with, what they're seeing and what they're liking. Interesting. You know, it's kind of creating, um, it's like a social matrix. Yeah. You know, like it wants you. It's algorithms. It's, it's really interesting, man. You know, it's really, it structures culture. Yeah. You know, and even on, even inside those apps, you know. I bet you there's like studies on like, different demographics and what their explore pages are like. like. Yeah. I could only imagine, like I haven't gone on like my wife's explore page or, you know, my kids don't. explore kids. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to do that right now. Um, but like, yeah, I mean, it, it just probably give you some insight onto like what, you know, like what people, I mean, it, it's interesting. It's probably all tailored. It's probably different for every yeah. person, right? It's a thousand percent different yeah. for every person. You know, let's let's talk about keeping like updated headshots. I know this is probably one of the most boring topics. Boring, but like, but, like so essential. Yeah. You know, you don't want to be your aunt at Remax for the last 20 years that's giving out the same business card and same headshot. You know, that's one thing, especially when I started. Even with, if you're older, it's still better. Yeah. Otherwise, people are going to make fun of you and 100%. laugh at your headshot because it's way outdated. And 100%. Yeah. You know, it's just like, uh, I guess you could assume it to if you, if you went to like a friend's house and the friend's house was super messy. Yeah. You know, would you want to like hang out with them more or, you know, everything is about to me, like keeping a clean aesthetic. And that's one of the easiest ways to do it is a clean headshot, right? Like that's on your email signature. That's on your business card. Sure. That's on a lot of, you it's know, your brand. it's your personal brand. It's your brand. brand. And yeah. there's a lot of people that don't take updated content, lifestyle photos, and they don't, they don't do a lot of updated photography, right? So if they have clean headshots, they can use that for their social media content, mm -hmm. which is gonna help, again, clean up the aesthetic a little bit. And you can even just use your iPhone, right? Like you could take a headshot with your iPhone. Can you, you get, yeah. get some can lighting? Can you, yes. If you had decent lighting, use portrait mode and- Don't go in the middle of the sun above your head yeah. where you get the shadows, but like maybe go If you have a, a decent room, eye and you know lighting, somebody. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Do I recommend, you know, Preferably, you get a professional headshot. You know, that's yeah, one dress thing that up, we take a minute, like you know, clean, shave it, or trim your beard, whatever. Like, look your best, right? Because <laughs> look is your, your best. This is your brand. You know, that's one thing that yeah. we, you know, as a company, we offer uh, at Secure Choice Lending for our preferred agents and our loan officers. That's the first thing we do. We're like, Just we're go, taking hey, new we're headshots for game. you, hundred percent. Second, yeah. you especially you get hired with us. Yeah. One of the first things you do is you come, you meet with me, you meet with our uh, other marketing director. And you take updated headshots. We come up with a marketing plan for you. And we kind of see, okay, well, who are your preferred agents? Let's check their social media out. What can we help them with? Do they need updated headshots? Do they need new business cards? Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of a different uh, approach. So by offering that to your referral partners and your partners, that, that's helped you get business. Oh, 100%. I mean, who else is doing that? That's a good idea. <laughs> Nobody, right? <laughs> you know, you, you might want to steal his idea. I mean, I, yeah. the thing is we give away free ideas on here and unfortunately not that many people do it. So if you're one of the no. few and you're <laughs> listening and you're like, that's a good idea, just go do it. No, go make it happen. Yeah. I think it's funny. I, again, going kind of ba back in the day a little bit, um, you can say all these sales tactics and listen to all these influence or wh whoever coaches, whatever. Sure. So many of these people, they're never going to do it themselves, you know, and yeah. sad, yeah. but you hope they do. You hope they take the information well, the ones and that, run with it. The ones that succeed do. Right. Right. The ones that want, they're hungry. They want to succeed. They yeah. want, you know, they want more, more, uh, they want more tequila. Yeah. That'd be, I, saw, that'd be, I saw that. Uh, you saw the, the glare uh, over. Which one are we looking at? Well, you can try this one. I do want to try that one because I need to know if I need to snake Small that Small commercial for uh, at We Drink Tequila <laughs> is. Uh, is this a product spot? <laughs> spotlight? product spot. All right. Um, we import tequila um, into America that is not here. And that's legal. It, well, it's legal for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's good stuff. So how, yeah, how does good. it taste? You like it? You have some? No, I'm good. Um, I got no, one more more podcast to do, so I got to I got to stay on the uh, stay straight. Do I don't. <laughs> I just have to sit in the passenger seat. So good. Back. 
and 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 uh, and, and make sure that the car doesn't crash. Yeah. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Um, what, where do you think like social media is going in the future? Like we, we've seen some involvement, like yeah. it's evolved a little well, it's evolved bit. It's evolving to video. It, it's short, short form video. Short form video is in the reels. I mean, like that's, that's the hot thing right now. Right? I mean, it's been yeah. the hot thing. For I life. forgot. I, I mean, obviously we're going into a lot of, you know, different areas of social Headshots, media, but I think that yeah. that's the most, one of the most important things that every single loan officer needs to be doing right now is video? short form video. And what, like like highlights or like tips on things? like, You know, what's funny is we have so much knowledge in our heads that we don't realize is relevant that a client is never heard of. You know, there's still the myth of 20% down is still so prevalent. You yeah. know, getting on and doing a short like, form like video. People don't even know they can do 3%. Three. Yeah. Yeah. If you're a first time home buyer, 3% down. Or even less if down. you have a government little program, whatever. VA. Whatever, yeah. VA 0% down. Or, or like some counties even have like a assistance. USDA. We'll have an assistance program, oh, yeah, yeah. right? Which we don't do. Obviously, we're non-QM. But yeah. I mean, if, if, if you're not, the awareness is, is on. Is, even though we have the most ability to, to reach the masses these days with, yeah. our, with our social media, I think the awareness about product is still so low because there's so much attention. People are trying to get so many, there's so much battle for your attention, yeah. right? And so people might hear something once mm-hmm. and it's right out their head because there's like you know they're already swiping to the next thing yeah. so repetition is you know consistency but 100%. is repetition like i'm i'm trying to beat like not beat but like just get <laughs> out the the news that we have a non-qm bank statement second mortgage product to a million dollars where you yeah. can make two and a half points on it and and i swear to god like people every time i saw people are like wait what i would lead with that like that exact yes. product is so unique nobody is offering that if you went to all these realtors and you went to your financial planner buddies yeah. and your cpa buddies and you Get said cash you offered out so that. you can buy another place or you don't have to touch your low rate first just here use this equity tap into it then you know realtors would be like wait, yeah what? do a and video realtors on are going to want to use it realtors are going to be like i could i could tap yeah. equity and i own two three houses and we do them on investment property, second home, and primary. So it's unheard of. Like, I, I just what I'm, my point is like repetition. Like, you don't want to annoy people, but mm-hmm. like, when is it? When is it? What's the right amount? Well, I of, think there's a, just a balance. There's yeah. a balance of work versus personal life. You don't want your page. That's another thing. Don't have two profiles. I see I a lot, one. especially realtors. I have two. Well, I have one for. Personal. We'll fix you up. <laughs> okay, so you don't, I don't want everyone seeing some of this stuff, you know. I understand, like, like but you're also up, not me selling, hunting. You you're know? not selling every day of your life either, right? You know, where a lot of these brokers. True. I, I guess if I was an LO and I was just, you know, not just that's yeah. that's a huge deal. Like I'm, I'm, I am. This is my life. I'm, I'm an LO. 100%. I'm a broker. Yeah, you want them to see everything. Don't you want to see let the them personal div- side. Don't divide the because t- how do they find you, right? Like a lot of times too, you're looking for somebody and like two or three profiles. Okay, which one is you? Is sure. every person going to take the time to go through and be like, okay, well, this this page, the last post activity. was two weeks ago. Okay, right. well, this page, the last post was... No, if you're a realtor, you need to have one page. You're sharing your business and your personal Combine together. It. 100%. Yeah. And you need a balance of that. The work-life you know, balance. Yeah. And people, you think, in, you think in your mind that people don't want to see that personal side because you're like, oh, it's not going to help me get business. But it does. They do. 100% they do. That's the they thing want to see that, that you're a real, authentic person yes. that they can have sit down and have a glass of tequila with right. and work with. You yeah. know, I mean, I tell you right now, if someone wanted to reach me and get like my attention, yeah, hundred percent, they would they would send, say something about tequila. That's gonna, <laughs> my, that's gonna get my attention. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. If they say something about like, hey, um, hey, John, uh, I, 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 you probably need or you're look, or hopefully you're looking at marketing options or you're looking at you know, new LOSs for your company, delete. Delete. But if they're like, hey, I saw that you are into Reposados. Yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna talk to them. <laughs> right? like, like, I love Reposado. Like, what do you like? What, what yeah. Reposados do you like? And then they're going to say it. And then, you know, oh, this is, I like that too. But, you know, you should try this. You know, for sure you would engage. Like, so 100%. if I'm going to do that, you know, and I, and I, I have three companies that I, that I am, I own and, I run two of them and, and or I have part, great partners, but like, like I'm busy and yeah. I have a family, kids that are teenagers, like, but I'm going to respond to that. Like how much also will someone respond to the fact that you like, oh, you're a huge, you know, 
fan of this or you're a, you're you know you you like to to water ski or you yeah. whatever you know you you have these different interests then people are going to connect with you on like right like yeah find the that's connection that's where you connect with people possible. you don't connect with people on numbers and mortgages no. That's like an afterthought. You know what's funny is, you know, a lot of these LOs, they think like, oh, I offer the best rates and the best products and the best. Okay, we're all selling money. We're all selling yeah. the same thing, right? Yeah, we so all the, the same sources. Day, it's who the client really wants to work with. Right. And who and what that comes down to is who they identify with the most. Yeah. You know, who, again, who they want to have a glass of tequila with. Sure. You know, so, and what's the best way to show them who you are. Right. Most likely Instagram, most likely, you know, social media in general. That's the only insight. That's well, the that's only window into who down. you are. That's you what know? they're doing when their guards down. Like, yeah. Like they're taking a shit <laughs> and they're looking at their Instagram, right? Yeah. Their guards down. For they're sure. Like, they're looking, right? Or they're, or they're like, you know, either the first right before they get out of bed or when going to bed. Like they're, yeah, they're, I mean, they're guards down. They're not like looking to. Social media has become the dashboard to everyone's life. You know, that's a good quote. Yeah. <laughs> quote Dashboard me. to everyone's life. It really has. It you is. know, where do you get your news from? Where do you get your news from? Twitter or Twitter or like, thank you. Instagram. Same. Yeah. Yeah. I don't go on CNN.com. No, I would never go on CNN.com. <laughs> but, you know, I, I you know I what I mean? Either. Like, you, well, I, you I do go actually, you know why? Because what was the famous quote that Denzel said? What, what movie? No, it's, it's like off a movie. He said, oh, he said, if you're when he's talking if you're about. if you're not reading the news, you're uninformed. If you're reading the news, you're misinformed. You're misinformed. Yeah. I remember so that quote actually. so my strategy is I look at a bunch of news because then you yeah. can, then you can put it all together because they're all selling something. They're all yeah, they'll have advertisers, the, advertisers, the right? They have advertisers. No. They have sponsors. So they're going to sell something. They're selling the Even the news as yeah. soon as they go to commercial, who's paying for that? Brought to you by Pfizer. We know we know yeah, that it's... majority of news or, or, or the majority of TV, mm. I think, what is it? More than half of the sponsors and the advertisers are pharmaceutical. Oh, really? More than half. That's a crazy yeah. stat. So, you know, it, and I think America is one of the only two countries that allows yeah. for, mm -hmm. for any kind of pharmaceutical ads. So there's a whole other rabbit hole we can go yeah. down that. Well, but, I like well, Twitter. I mean, that's why I think the news is great from Twitter, too, because you can actually get like, OK, this person is there. And they're tweeting about X. You know right, what I mean? Right. Like, there's actually like the more citizen journalists, the more you know localized. Well, you can get information. Like kind of an overall feel when you're seeing a lot of different angles. Because mm -hmm. if you sit and just only hear, it's like hanging around, hanging around that one loser friend. It's always yeah. saying like, "This sucks. That sucks. This sucks." And you're like, "God." Then it just affects you, and you're like, "Man, all this stuff sucks." Yeah. But then you hang out with a positive friend. They're like, "Oh, the world is great. I just tried this mm -hmm. amazing this." I did that, and then so then you have this balance in life, right? Yeah. Whereas, like, if you're only hearing one source, I'm not trying to, to like sway anybody on anything, but I just think overall you want to hear multiple sources of anything, right? Like, yeah. I mean, if you just listen to the news the last year, you think the real estate market was just right. the worst ever. You should never buy it's a gonna house crash. again. It's going to crash. Be a renter right. and submit. Yeah. You know, but realistically, people are making money. And it, isn't it amazing when you go, like, I'll go to Housing Wire, and then I'll go to like, CNBC, mm -hmm. and then I'll go to, like, CNN Money, and then I'll go to, like, like Fox This, and, like, look at their, their business, Fox Business, and you'll see different articles about the housing market. Mm -hmm. And there are people, for sure, naysayers saying the market's going to crash. It's clickbait. They want you to click it. It's for sure clickbait. And That's it's how they get paid. frustrating, because if you're you know, a professional and you're an expert in your local market, right. you most likely know that things aren't that bad. Are there some markets that are suffering more than others? Right. Yeah, of course. But if you just generalize and say nationwide, it's the worst time to ever be a homeowner, it's not. It's going to be worse than the not. last housing crisis. You're like, but wait. Oh my gosh. Well, wait, how many like articles how, about that? Like clickbait. Clickbait. Because yeah. how can it be? But see, that's you know? what the consumers are out there getting. They're so reading that. So what if you started a little news mortgage news channel? Yeah. Where you were giving the best... You know, you're basically the filter of all these sources, and then you're interpreting it with the lens of a mortgage broker. Mm -hmm. Like that would be valuable, right? Like no, hundred percent. Or just that's again, an idea to do on an Instagram page. I I would just say mortgage news, Brandon's mortgage news, <laughs> right? Like so, I mean, that's valuable. Yeah, I would say just start a weekly market update every exactly. Friday. I love that every Friday. Brandon's Maybe. weekly market update. Here you go. Here's an article I read. Here's what I think's really. Here's what I say is really happening. You know, so yeah. I would do. Two to three videos a week, you know, especially if you're just starting, right? Yeah, yeah. Do a weekly market update is the first video that I tell every loan officer. And make it interesting. Don't be like, 
Yeah. Uh, da, 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 practice, you know, look good. Hook line. Hook first, line. Yeah, yeah. You know, get them involved. Get excited. Like, you know, like speak, speak yeah. loud or whatever. You know, don't no be No monotone. Boring. And yeah. I don't know. Tell me what uh, makes Secure Choice Lending special. Well, uh, I would say, why'd you choose them? Like, they have a vision, man. And it just reminds me of back in the day and even Drop Mortgage Days. You know, you had yeah. a vision and you saw what's coming. You know, and Secure Choice has the same thing. The owners, Joey, Mark, they're really, they're great people, man. I went to. Uh, but they're growing. They're growing. They're growing man. fast, man. They're in growing this super. market. So if you're growing Most in this market. Most companies went under. Like 50% of companies, I think, was a stat a lot went of under in this last yeah, year. A lot of mortgage companies went down. In the last year, yeah. So they went from, I think, 20 or 40 to like 120, almost in the last 140 two years. in the last year. It's Dude, insane. And this last year was hard. It was brutal for a lot of people, Just man. Just thinking about it makes me need to pour a little bit. More yeah. Actually. We, hard you know, we have, a, hard. we have a vision, man. And I think that the so culture. So what are they doing different? What are they doing different? We all sell money, right? Yeah. But what's the difference is culture. Okay. Culture is the number one but like thing. What, what's the difference of your culture? Are you guys all positive? Are you guys excited? Yeah, of course. Like, you know, we're all, it's it's a bunch. Of, first off, I think it's it's a younger generation. I don't know how old the oldest person is. So, I'm not so saying you, that's that, something you can solve by just going to hang out. I mean, I, I'm not one that loves to hang out with people that are just sitting home watching soap operas, right? Like, no. I would rather go hang out with people that are doing things that are, you know, actionable, whether or not they're older yeah. or younger. But if they're out and they're being young... Like you can be young, right? You can. Yeah. I just speak young, for the younger, just youth the is, energy. Is, youth you know is about I mean? energy. Or yeah, exactly. If you're old and you can kind of equate. We have older people for sure, but it's all the same but energy. You have We're energy. all excited. Have young, We're all moving yeah. forward. You know, everyone's yeah. positive. I mean, and everyone is, I mean, a lot, everyone's good people. I mean, it's cheesy, but it's true. You know what I mean? You like just, you, they've, they've attracted a good core. A hundred percent. We've had people that were great producers, but maybe not great people and. There's those out they there. They didn't have them on board. Yeah, some, you know what I mean? Some, like the culture, we want to be... protect that. We want to protect, you know, having um, a good reputation and being great to work with. And, you know, and again, you know, I lead a lot of the marketing and just kind of being, you know, unique in our marketing, more lifestyle driven versus just like 3% down and number, 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 number. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like no one, no one's going to read mortgage facts all day long. You know what yeah. I mean? It's funny. You no, see, it doesn't catch their eye. Yeah. Really. And they just get their generalized like holiday posts. Like, no, man, we're going around the office and taking videos of everybody and, you know, our support stuff. What do you, what do you guys want for Christmas? You know, we're just, we really want to introduce like who we are, you know, to the world and kind of give a window into, you know, just all of our personalities yep. together. It's good. No, they're all good people. Um, if fun. you had, if you were a CEO or you were a broker that uh, ran, like it was your own shop, hmm. and you had, let's say, five thousand a month to spend, okay, what would you do with it on marketing? I would find somebody that. And what's the best ROI on five grand a month? Yeah, I would say you need somebody that's going to run your page, and. Hopefully you'd find somebody young that's talented with, you know, a camera or an iPhone. Yep. So you have a lighting setup. Lighting is cheap. Yeah, you can get lights cheap. You know, that's I think one thing that no one really talks about that's funny is lighting. Yeah. Lighting is cheap and it is so it's massively important. Oh my gosh. I mean, like, look how great we look. <laughs> it's not just the lighting, but it's it's so important. You know, it's funny, it's like I have a I have a pretty sick camera personally, right? Like I have to for my job. But um, if the lighting wasn't good, you wouldn't know my camera from yeah. an iPhone 7. Sure. You know what I mean? The lighting is everything. And that's something that I think a lot of people aren't um, aware of. They don't know. No one talks about it, right? Yeah. It's like something you would only know if you took like Photoshop mm -hmm. one or photo one in school or whatever. Because like I, I took photo in, class, in school back in the day. We had to do like we had dark rooms. That existed? Yeah. There was, well, there was dark rooms. Oh, man. You go in there and you'd hope like you're in high school. You hope that... The one girl that sat on, you know, the third row, two two back, would meet you in the dark room. <laughs> I wish we had that. It was Catholic <laughs> private school, so. But Joe like, I mean, I no, but that. like back in the day, they they <laughs> taught you about lighting. Like that that was one hundred and one. Like, you. Yeah. You, but but you're right. No one talks about that. No. And what's the difference between someone that looks good on camera 
typically Lighting. is I'm telling you, man, the bags under the eyes, the the, yeah. the the weird shadows from above, you know, like the the LED lights in the in the office look so bad. Yeah, it's harsh, you know. And also, and, um, and, and you can, and, and it's not even something you you can consciously know when you, but you, when you see it, it's subconscious. You literally see it, and you go, "Ugh, that's mm -hmm. terrible." I'm gonna swipe it away, away from that. But if you see something that's lit right. You're like, who? What's this? It's inviting. It's inviting. You know, and yeah. especially if you do it right, um, Instagram is formatted for iPhones, actually, not Android, for iPhones. So when you take a really high quality video, especially the new iPhone, iPhone, phone, <laughs> iPhone cute. 14 Pro Max, mm -hmm. it's a 48 megapixel camera. You know how powerful Jeez. that is? Wait, I'm wait, shooting. Wait, wait, 48? 48. That's crazy. Is that 4K? Yeah, it shoots 4K. Is it 5K? 60 frames is, is a second. It 6K? 5K. It's 4K, 60 frames okay. per second. That's massive. That's that's a it's insane. And no one needs that much power. I mean, that's that's a lot of frames per second. You yeah, no, you don't we necessarily can only see 30 need 30 sec 30 frames a second. Yeah, and then most stuff is, you know, the output isn't even going to be that high. Sure. Personally, I'll usually shoot in 1080 or 4K 30 frames. Yep. Um but I shoot a lot with my iPhone now. Which is crazy. I mean, they've done music videos like uh, mm -hmm. a, I think it's um, I'm gonna botch who it is. We have like a thirty thousand dollar camera, bud. That we like, you know, that yeah. we use for most of our stuff, and, and, and we cut it out a lot. It helps make it look good, but like you can do. They make they make movies with yeah. iPhone, with iPhones like full no, length feature movies. We've improved our workflow so much by switching a lot. You know, a lot of our different videos, and especially the short form videos. Switching it over to the iPhone has been huge, yeah. you know, because now, you know, our people, especially Omar, he doesn't need to sit there. And we have, you know, a lot of other editors outside the building that we hire out. Yep. Um, they don't need to sit there and edit hours of, you know, right. feature footage that for a 30 second clip about, you know, this person's market update. Right. Right. So switching to an iPhone, a really nice iPhone, the newer one, I think is key. Having good lighting is key. Having somebody that understands social media that's maybe younger, again, that we talked about maybe hiring out of some younger person out of college or high sure. school, whatever. And they're that probably knows. making minimum wage, so you can pay them that. Yeah. You're like, look, you're going to have experience. I'm going to pay you what you're paying, getting paid to do this crap job. Yeah. You get to do something fun and work with the profession that you know have, might be a career someday. Yeah. Puts it on their resume that they've been doing yeah. marketing for, you know, a mortgage producer. And you can does. find them anywhere. Like, you could find them at, if you. First off, you got to find someone willing to work. That's not easy these days, right? So go find someone maybe oh, at a, at a whole nother conversation. <laughs> find someone a good this working that you that you connect with. Maybe you're at a at a at a store. They're selling mm -hmm. you something, or yeah, make a connection. I mean, yeah, that's good. But that that I like that. It's a good spend on five grand. Um, anything else? I mean, where does someone find you if they're looking for you know some advice on you know marketing? Oh, so. um, well, Instagram, right? So of course. at uh, at B Boyd the lender T H A lender like um, the lender the the lender uh -huh. yeah so that's my Instagram um, I'm of course on LinkedIn Brandon Boyd um, the social media director for secure uh, secure choice lending uh, we're a great growing mortgage company if you're looking for a great mortgage shop um, happy to have you awesome man thanks for coming on dude. I appreciate it, brother. It's always good seeing you. Always good seeing you. And make sure you like, share, subscribe, do all those things, please, because we are here giving out content for you. It's all here for you. It's not for us. It's just we want to give out ideas, tips, tricks. And if you're not liking, sharing, subscribing, you're not doing your part. So please subscribe to our channel. My producer really wants you to. We're trying to get our numbers up. And share this with others if you liked it. So I appreciate you watching and being a part of our podcast. Thanks, Brandon. Cheers. Cheers. The Million Dollar Mortgage Experience Podcast.